dear students let us discuss one more module in image based question that is module number 4 vascular surgery so case number 1 so 54 year old male present to the vascular surgery clinic with 6 months history of right calf pain with ambulation the pain consistently occurs after walking about 150 feet and is remitted with rest remitted means he is disappearing despite the pain he is able to perform his duties and carry out normal activities of daily living he has been smoking one pack of cigarettes per day since age 18 he is already now 54 on examination palpable femoral pulses bilaterally and absent popliteal and pedal pulses on the right side work up on the right side the abpi was diminished that's only 0.68 so these are the four pictures and these are the seven questions with this clinical history what is your diagnosis and why you are saying so so this is a case of chronic lower limb ischemia right side probably because of atherosclerosis above the knee and this is known as because it's intermittent claudication this comes under lifestyle limiting ischemia okay the risk factors are of course smoking diabetic mellitus hypertension and hyperlipidemia the two main causes of chronic limb ischemia are atherosclerosis and thromboangiitis obliterans the pathology the main pathology is the disparity between the demand and supply of oxygen to the exercising muscles see these patients will develop pain only if they start walking if they are sitting in some place they won't develop pain at all only these exercising muscles need more oxygen because of i mean the obstruction of the artery there will be less blood supply and less oxygen supply to these muscles these muscles will undergo what is called anaerobic metabolism and lot of lactic acid will be produced in these muscles and this is the cause for the pain okay and what is this clinical test you are seeing here so you are asking the patient to lift the lower limb when they are going to lift more than 45 degrees if the patient is having peripheral arterial disease the limb will become pale in color and if you are asking them to lower the limb down like this this will become slightly red in color this is called dependent ruber and this test is called oof sorry burgess angle of vascular insufficiency normally this paleness will develop if they are going to raise more than 45 degrees but suppose if somebody is developing at 30 degree itself that means it is a severe occlusion what is a normal abpi that is ankle brachial pressure index is normally it is 0.9 to 1 okay you can see that investigation here this one is the abpi measurement it is just like measuring the bp in a no normal uh, patient but instead of stethoscope <coughs> you have to use this doppler probe to record the uh, record the uh, bp so ankle blood pressure should be always it should be equal to the brachial pressure yeah it's not less than the upper arm pressure suppose if this pressure ankle pressure is less than the brachial or the upper limb pressure that means there is some block in the arteries i mean supplying the lower limb okay and this will become less okay Th that is uh, this is a uh, very easy test you can do it at bedside abpi and what is this investigation this is the gold standard investigation okay this is called arterial duplex scan arterial duplex scan so the, not only you can pinpoint the location of the block you can also see the extent of the block normally in a uh, in a arterial pulsation you can you can hear a, a, a three phases it is normally triphasic if there is a block 
what will happen slowly the triphasic sound will become biphasic and then monophasic and finally there won't be any sound at all if there is a complete block so this is the gold standard investigation for any vascular problem not only artery even for vein this is the uh, this is the thing so how will you manage this patient you can manage this patient conservatively because it's only intermittent claudication stage you have to do what is called lifestyle modification that comprises you have to ask the patient to stop smoking and start walking they have to do some supervised exercise avoid or you have to treat the risk factors like diabetes hypertension and hyperlipidemia but you can also use some pharmacological agents like pentoxifilin and silostazole which are likely to increase the claudication distance you can try this one but usually there is no need for any surgical intervention uh, in intermittent claudication stage so case number 2 This is a 47 year old man a known case of hypertension diabetic tobacco abuse and coronary artery disease present to the emergency room with 3 week history of spontaneous ulceration of the left great toe and increasing wrist pain in the left foot you can see it here and you can see this gangrene here yeah <coughs> Uh, uh, vital signs are normal on examination there is a gray dry gangrene at the base of the left great toe that's what you are seeing here with mild uh, surrounding cellulitis the patient has dry and hairless skin of uh, both the sides both lower limbs bilateral femoral and popliteal pulses are palpable but pedal pulses are absent to palpation but there is an audible doppler signal at the left dorsal spedis there is no sensory or motor loss sensory and motor loss will happen only if it is an acute limb ischemia so this is also chronic limb ischemia but because since the patient is having already developed uh, gangrene dry gangrene and rest pain this is a case of critical limb ischemia not a lifestyle limiting ischemia this is critical limb ischemia you have to do surgery in these cases yeah unless you are going to do surgery see already he has developed an ulcer i mean gangrene dry gangrene okay this is the uh, another investigation you should do in the in the previous case you need not do this uh, angio this angiogram or digital subtraction angiogram this is this you have to do only if you are planning to do surgery uh, then only you have to do this uh, uh, angiogram because this is a road map for surgery see you can see the Uh, side of the block and the extent of the block very well so this is digital subtraction angiogram you have to look for three things if you want to do a successful bypass surgery you have to see a proximal adequate proximal run in of the die here and adequate collateral blood vessels you are seeing lot of collaterals here and there should be adequate uh, <coughs> distal run off of the die okay only this part of the vessel is missing okay that is uh, this is uh, uh, this is what uh, uh, but this uh, investigation you have to do only if you are planning surgery okay and what is this one this is also the same digital subtraction angiogram but in the first film you are seeing only uh, not a not a not a long block maybe it is a stenosis or a block somewhere here is less than one or two centimeters only but you are seeing lot of collateral blood vessels here because this uh, pathology is only limited you have to do a procedure called ptla or percutaneous transluminal angioplasty it has been done in the second picture you are seeing you are not seeing this stenosis here okay you are seeing the dye is flowing very well here and you can see the disappearance of all these collateral blood vessels the same patient after doing angioplasty ptla after some time you are seeing all the collateral vessels disappeared whereas here this is also a block but the block is in the not in the peripheral blood vessel it is in the aortoiliac if there is a block in the aortoiliac uh, i mean part of the uh, artery 
then you have to do what is called aorto bifemoral bypass if there is a block in the aorto iliac block or saddle thrombus here okay this this is called lerig syndrome and in male patients this will produce uh, impotence yeah and here you are seeing block in the superficial femoral artery see this is the inguinal ligament this is common femoral artery this is deep femoral branch and this is superficial femoral artery there is a block so here what you have to do you have to do your bypass surgery femoropopliteal bypass surgery yeah the if it is above knee you can use synthetic material here dacron or ptfe mess you can use or you can use the great saphenous vein also you can use but if you are using great saphenous vein either you have to reverse the vein or you have to destroy the walls and you have to use it if it is below knee uh, bypass surgery then you should use only great saphenous vein and there is no role of any synthetic materials like dacron graft or ptfe graft so this is what i have discussed all these things you can see this answers also and in the bailey uh, go and read these pages so case number 3 a 68 year old active man man presents to the emergency room with a four hour history of left limb pain and numbness he notes no prior leg problems and no history of claudication walking at least 2 km daily without stopping he is walking 2 km without any problem see is, there is no chronic problem in this case his past history is significant for a myocardial infarction 7 <coughs> years ago and subsequent he underwent cabg past medical history includes tobacco use and hypertension but no diabetes or stroke medications include an aspirin a calcium channel blocker and a statin agent now has a difficult time moving his foot due to pain and neurological impairment see patient is already having neurological impairment he is difficult to move paralysis has set in that means most probably this is an acute ischemia and you are seeing this limb this is very very classical and what is your diagnosis okay it is acute limb ischemia the two most common causes for this pathology are either arterial embolus or arterial thrombosis the figure 1 and figure 2 you are seeing here a classical picture of mottling populous mottling here also you are seeing and here also you are seeing mottling what is the significance of this mottling if the populous mottling blanches on pressure that means the limb is still viable and you can salvage that limb if the mottling is a fixed one and doesn't disappear on pressure that means the underlying limb is not viable already it is not viable and we cannot save that limb that is the significance of this populous mottling and what is the gold standard investigation again here also you must do the duplex scan okay to confirm the diagnosis is it a embolus or arterial thrombus everything you can make out by doing a duplex scan and what is the grading of this acute limb ischemia it could be grade 1 limb is viable grade 2 limb is threatened grade 2a marginally threatened limb 2b it is immediately threatened the limb is immediately threatened and grade 3 limb is already irreversibly damaged and you cannot save this limb so these are the three grading of acute limb ischemia figure 3 okay we are going to the figure yeah this one this is figure 3 you are seeing it is a case of embolus arterial embolus so what is the treatment you have to put a fogarty catheter inside and you have to pull this embolus out you have to make a opening in the artery artery arteriotomy but before that you have to uh, control this artery otherwise no there will be lot of bleeding you have to control proximally and distally and then you have to make an opening in the artery introduce this fogarty catheter proximal to this embolus and then inflate the balloon and pull it out so that the the whole embolus will 
come out. But that is what he was seeing here. This is what is called Fugati embolectomy. This is what you have to do. And what is this picture? This is a case of arterial thrombosis. In case of thrombosis, there is no role of this Fugati, uh, Fugati catheter. You have to introduce a catheter inside this uh, thrombus and you have to do what is called catheter directed thrombolysis. You have to use some thrombolytic agents like streptokinase and adelipase. These are the things you have to use. And then after that, okay, you can uh, you, you can do the cathedral director thrombolysis, thromb thrombosis. After that, you can do even bypass surgery. So what are the reperfusion injuries? The muscles will be without blood supply for some time. And this will produce myoglobulinuria, lactic acidosis, and compartment syndrome. The myoglobulinuria can be treated by hemodialysis. Otherwise, this will produce acute renal failure. And the compartment syndrome can be treated by three fasciotomies. Case number four, the 60-year-old woman with visible veins for many years on the medial aspect of the left thigh, knee and leg, attended the clinic, being unable to cope with compression stockings prescribed by her GP, as she finds it difficult to apply the stockings every day due to her rheumatoid arthritis. She is otherwise a healthy individual. She is worried that she will develop leg ulcers like her mother and is keen to have treatment. <clears throat> On examination, there is dark pigmentation over left ankle. You can see it here. And the Trendelenburg test 1 and 2, both are positive. So what is your diagnosis in this case? It is a case of primary varicose vein involving the long saphenous vein. The two main types are primary varicose vein and secondary varicose vein. In figure 1 and 2, what we are seeing? See, here you are seeing dilated veins over the great saphenous area from the ankle and even in the thigh you are seeing here. And in this picture, you are seeing dark pigmentation around the ankle, this is called gaiters area, and this dark and thickened skin is called lipodermatosclerosis. This is because of chronic venous hypertension. The venous blood will come out of the small venules, and the RBCs in this venous blood will be destroyed, and the uh, hemosiderin will be liberated. That is the cause for this black color pigmentation and bilivadin is the cause for the itching and eventually this patient will undergo this lipodermatosclerosis. If you are not going to intervene even at this stage, patient is definitely going to develop a venous ulcer or varicose vein ulcer here in this area and this area by paleolar area is called gaitas area. Okay, what is the gold standard investigation. For all vascular problem, this is again duplex scan, but it is venous duplex scan. So unlike the artery, if you are uh, palpating the vein, you will see, you will hear only a monophasic continuous humming sound. That's all you will hear. You won't see triphasic sound. But if it is a varicose vein, okay, what you will see because you will hear biphasic. The monophasic humming sound will become biphasic if it is a varicose vein because this blue color is showing the forward or upward flowing blood, blood. And this red color is the blood which is coming down or reflexing back. So that is what clearly you can, you are seeing here, it is the forward flowing and it is going up and then it is touching this normal. Okay. This is what you have to actually you have to pr place the probe here and you have to skuse this area, this cuff. See, normally it is monophasic, only one sound. But here in this picture you are seeing, see, downward and then it is going up and then touching the thing. This is biphasic. Biphasic sound is very characteristic of varicose vein. Okay, what is the, what is, what they are showing it here? What is the, um, 
And another thing, you know, before going to these pictures, I want to uh, discuss about this CAAP classification, clinical etiology, uh, anatomy and pathology classification. But the clinical classification is very important. Repeatedly asked question in your exam. So C0 means no evidence of venous disease. C1 is reticular vein. C2 is just simple varicose veins. C3 is ankle edema of venous origin, uh, but not foot edema. C4A, spin, skin pigmentation or eczema. 4B, lipodermatosclerosis or atrophy blanchy. 4C, corona phlebectasia. 5, it is healed venous ulcer. And 6 is open venous ulcer. So this classification is very important. The diagnostic test in primary varicose vein is Tendelenburg test 1 and 2. If test 1 is positive, that is a pure cephenofemoral valve incompetency. If Tendelenburg 2 is also positive, that means the patient is also having perforator incompetency. And okay, what, did, what we are seeing it in figure 4. So this is a conservative treatment, okay, where this is a foam sclerotherapy under ultrasound guidance you have to make this uh, sclerosense foam and then under ultrasound guidance you have to inject it into the vein into the vein itself so this uh, sclerosense will uh, act on the endothelium and okay it will get blocked see it will get blocked here so this is a uh, uh, tessaris okay uh, this is what is called tessaris uh, uh, foam, see, there's a ultrasound guided foam sclerotherapy for varicose vein. This is supposed to damage the endothelial surface of the vein. What is the treatment in this case? For pure cephenofemoral valve incompetency, you have to do Trendelenburg operation, that is, cephenofemoral plus ligation. And then, if patient is also having perforate or incompetence because this patient, both Trendelenburg test 1 and 2, both are positive. So along with this Trendelenburg operation, you should also strip the, uh, strip the uh, vein or you have to do what is called multiple stab avulsion. You have to strip the vein only just below the knee. Uh, below the knee. Uh, don't strip the whole vein up to the ankle for fear of injuring the saphenous nerve, which lies along the great saphenous vein. For pure perforator incompetency, you can do dot and cocket subfacial ligation. And what are the latest treatment? What do you mean by the EVLA? It is endovenous laser ablation or endovenous radio frequency ablation. In both these cases, okay, you can use ultrasound and you can do what is called Thomason anesthesia. That is local anesthetic should be uh, combined with a lot of normal saline and you have to inject it around the vein and then only you have to use. Otherwise, no, this thermal energy will go out of the vein and it will injure the surrounding area also. In order to avoid it, you have to use this Thomason anesthesia, it's called. Coming to the case number five, a 35-year-old woman, a farmer intravenous drug abuser, presented with bilateral swollen lower limbs of many years duration. Recently, she has noticed prominent waves in the lower limb and lower abdominal wall and would like surgical intervention. He is an intravenous drug abuser, that is, and she suddenly developed dilated veins. So this is a, maybe, uh, he is a chronic drug user. <coughs> so she might have gone for DVT and then this DVT has recanalized. This is not an acute DVT, a chronic one, which is, that is what is called post phlebitic syndrome. That is what, what is your diagnosis? Diagnosis is secondary varicose vein, secondary to the DVT. The causes are extensive compression on veins by pelvic tumors, pregnancy, congenital AV formation, and a circulate to deep penis thrombosis. All these or causes for secondary varicose vein. In figure 1 and 2 here, you are seeing the uh, lipodermatosclerosis and dilated vein. 
both the dilated veins also you are seeing here this is here also the the, uh, the i mean the gold standard investigation is the doppler ultrasound you are seeing the uh, biphasic normally it should be monophasic here also you are seeing the biphasic sound but for superficial veins you have to use high resolution uh, ultrasound transducer that is 12 to 18 megahertz yeah and the patient should be in standing position to find out the superficial veins to visualize or to pick up the deep veins you have to use an another uh, type of ultrasound transducer or probe that is convex or micro convex probes which are having lower frequency that is only 3 to 8 8 ma megahertz the treatment shown in figure 4 is graded compression stockings okay i will show it this is the graded compression stocking in the ankle area okay one minute i will just oh, yeah focus it so that you will see it better in the ankle area okay the pressure should be this is the compression stocking treatment it should be 18 mm of mercury calf region it should be 14 mm around the popliteal region 8 mm of mercury and in the lower thigh 10 mm upper thigh 8 mm only this is not ready made stocking you have to tailor made the stocking you have to take measurement to uh, each patient and you have to tailor made these uh, stockings okay and this pressure level is very important this is what is called compression stocking and what is this treatment okay that is what is called bisgard treatment whenever you are dealing with the secondary varicose vein you should not do any surgery and the clinical test to confirm this secondary varicose vein is known as modified perthes test and the treatment is bisgard regimen and you can remember this mnemonic for this uh, treatment to remember this i mean the treatment 4 me a b c d 4 means four layer dressing you should do you have to do massage m e is elevation of the limb a is antibiotics you have to give b is you have to use a bandage electrocrep electrocrep uh, bandage c is you have to clean the ulcer d is dressing with u salt and e is exercise you have to alternatively ask the patient to elevate and then lower the limbs both the limbs alternatively that is what you have to ask the patient to do